Black Widows, from the unusually potent Venom to the iconic Red Hourglass, these spiders are some of the most universally recognized and feared animals in the world, often seen as an instant sign of danger. But another spider has been building a reputation of danger for itself recently as well, the False Widow. Are these spiders as dangerous as they appear, or are they just a harmless look-alike? I'm Mikey Green, and my goal is to show just how little we really know about the strange creatures living their hidden lives all around us. My adventures to find crazy animals usually take me around the variety of habitats in my home area of South Florida. However, today, we are in Texas in search for two of the world's most infamous spiders, the False Widow and the Black Widow, and compare the two in terms of appearance, behavior, and most importantly, the venom. Thankfully, we didn't have to go far, as both of these spiders have made a home for themselves in urban areas. Right outside the window of our place was a web of our first main target, the False Widow. Let's take a look. Whew. Got her. This might not be the most flattering of backdrops right here, but this is definitely not how or where I was expecting to find one of my top target spiders of the last few years. This is the false widow spider, specifically the species Steatoda triangulosa, the triangulate false widow, also known as the triangulate combfoot spider. False widows are a group of spiders that comprise the genus Steatoda, a genus which contains spiders that as you might expect by the name, look quite a lot like widow spiders. Long spindly legs with a disproportionately large spherical abdomen. Dark in color with pale patterning on the abdomen. Now those similarities in body structure as well as in eye arrangement, the look of the face, pretty much everything morphologically about this spider to widow spiders actually comes from the fact that they are indeed related. They are both in the family Theridiidae which are also known as cobweb spiders. And besides being in the same family, they're actually in the same subfamily too, the Latrodectinae, where, oddly enough, the widow spiders and the false widows are considered each other's closest living relatives. And you can really see that in just how similar they are in morphology, in behavior when it comes to building their tangly webs in little corners around people's houses, and also in color pattern. Right now, I'm gonna let this beautiful false widow spider crawl onto my hand and see how she behaves sitting on my hand. All right, here she is. I am so excited to finally be holding one of these spiders. I cannot believe that I am handling a false widow right now. I have been looking for one of these for years and I'm not even where I live. I'm here visiting Texas. So it is just incredible for me to be finally looking at one of these, but now that it's out of my hand, I can really start looking at the differences to start noting if you think that what you have is a widow spider, but actually might be a false widow. So first of all, this is very small in size. Now, I actually do think Triangulosa is one of the smaller Steatoda species, but this is a full grown adult female, false widow that I'm holding right here. They do not get large in size at all, or at least not nearly as large as the true widow spiders get. Now in terms of patterning on this beautiful false widow, specifically this species, the triangular one, you can see a gorgeous row of white triangles running down the back. You will not find that pattern on any true widow spider, but Steatoda is a pretty large genus and pretty diverse in terms of color pattern. So there's not one pattern to look out for that would make something definitively a Steatoda, but there is a pattern to look out for to know if it isn't a widow spider. And if we find one, we'll be able to see what that is. Because I promise, once you get to know these spiders, a true widow spider will be absolutely unmistakable from one of these false widows. So let's put this beautiful triangulate false widow right back where I found it and let's set our searches on its larger, more strikingly patterned and more venomous relative. That was the easy one. Now for a bigger challenge finding a true black widow spider. While black widows, like their false cousins, have managed to live alongside humans pretty well, they tend to be a lot more secretive, making their webs underneath structures that make them pretty hard to find. But in a natural area not far from our place was a tangly web that might just have what we're looking for hidden right in it. 
this right here that is living right in this web is the famous black widow spider, but not just any of the species, the southern black widow. The one with the iconic complete hourglass right right at the bottom of the abdomen, which if you're looking at it from the right angle from below should be the easiest way to tell that this is a real widow spider and not a false widow. But there's also quite a few other ways to be able to tell these apart besides the obvious patterning difference, which is that red hourglass on the bottom, that even other species of black widows outside of the range of the southern black widow would still have at least a broken hourglass on the bottom of the abdomen. Notice how the rest of the spider's body is basically patternless. Now there are some widow species that do have patterns. The patterns that are found on the abdomens of widow spiders are circular, usually like three rows of circles running down the top of the abdomen and the sides of the abdomen, like on some black widows or brown widows, and of course, the red widow from Florida. But you're not gonna see any false widows with those rows of circles running down their abdomen. And while they do come in a variety of patterns that are quite beautiful, none of them show the circle pattern. Now also, widow spiders do get much larger, as well as have comparatively longer legs. If you look at the proportions of a false widow, it is much stubbier. <laughs> Compare it to looking at this black widow or any other widow spider, and you see that the legs are proportionately a lot longer compared to the body size. And the overall body size, at least while full grown, is a lot larger than a full grown false widow of any kind. All right, now let's talk about the venom. False and true widows are actually shown to be each other's closest relatives. So actually they do have some fairly similar traits to their venom. However, the bite from a real widow spider is going to be miles more painful than that from a false widow. To elaborate on this, research has shown that false widow venom contains the classic toxin found in the venom of true widow spiders, alpha latrotoxin. This is a neurotoxin, meaning it targets the nervous system and can be especially useful in subduing fast moving insect prey. However, alpha latrotoxin, unusually for spider venom, is potent to vertebrates as well and is a big reason why widow spiders, and sometimes false widows, are considered medically significant to humans. Due to their close relatedness, false and true widow venoms share more compounds than just alpha latrotoxin. In fact, the venom of the two has been shown to share about two thirds of the same compounds, while the bite of some species like the noble false widow, Steatoda nobilis, have been shown to result in some severe side effects a false widow envenomation is usually not something to worry about. So yeah, here it is, the southern black widow spider. Now, now I am not gonna handle this, I'm just gonna leave it be right in its web where I found it. Spiders generally will not bite you if unprovoked, but wow, what a gorgeous animal this is. I'm so happy to be finding this because I do not see this species often at all, even where I live in Florida. So let's leave this beautiful animal right where we found it. But I hope that you enjoyed learning how to tell the difference between a real widow spider and the false widow. And if you enjoyed this video, then make sure to check out this video right here, where we find a red house spider, a common urban species in the southeastern United States, and learn how to tell it from the often confused yet much rarer red widow. See you there.